I definitely want that one in the front there. Uh -huh. yeah. that, that, that first one with, with the beehive look in the center. That, that is so uh -huh. beautiful. Hopefully the ceilings are higher there than they are here. <laughs> You want to take it? Yeah. Okay. Take it and move it over here. Well, let's put it uh, over here, Wait, away, we... away from the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. And let's take this one, which I like a lot, and put it next to it. Now, get, now come out here and get, pick a smaller one. Pick a small one. Well, I mean, of all the... All right, now, there are three uh -huh. of totally different textures and sizes. Do you yeah. like those in relationship? But, you know, Do you like those in relation? Idea. But you want, you want a whole variety of sizes there, don't yeah. you? Okay, that's oh, good. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying people in Richmond are going to like them at all. But I'm just saying they should have the choice to kind of... Well, as I told you, them. I just want to put them all there. I've curated a number of painting and sculpture shows over the past 20 years or so. I like to curate shows of, of artists that I think people should know better. And I've been doing this for, uh, for many years. As you know, I've been accumulating art. Uh, contemporary art and, and, and African art and other for 35, 40 years now. And uh, I like to share my enthusiasms and share my taste, such as it may be, uh, with other people. Uh -huh. And I've got, well, not too many questions about that, a couple, not uh -huh. many. I love yeah. this. It's lovely. Yeah. It's marvelous. And that's very nice what you've done down here, which you didn't do in any of the others, I don't think. I thought those three pieces would be wonderful in the show. Good. Yeah. The plaster. Now, remind me how tall that becomes, how big that becomes in its full version. I think they're two feet. They, they're, they're six feet. Can I define art? Very hard to define art, isn't it? Art is metaphor. Art has to do with a, rep a representation of some part of our consciousness, something that, something that relates to some part of our consciousness. But I'm terrible about defining things like art. So basically, I just move these two things apart, stretching the point till these well, two see, I like, I like, having, I like having the six-foot version of this right. in the show because and it relates to, to the piece with, uh, with, with, with the uh, white cube. Right. Uh, uh, with the stuff coming off. That's one of your earliest pieces. That's an early piece. It's a wonderful piece. I remember loving that a long time. That's a beautiful piece. That was sort of proposed for the Nodler show. That's why it's out, you know, because we were bringing things out to... God, that's a beautiful piece. I remember seeing that here, I think, first, a long, 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 long time ago in the back room. A long time ago. It's very hard to define what, what art is. Um, it is the opposite of what art is not. That's about as close as I can come to it. I know it when I see it. Same way that I know usually no good art from bad art. It's hard to define those things, and it's, it's, it's pointless to try. So anyway, this becomes six foot by six foot by six foot, and I, know I have exactly the right corner that I, that, that I wanted to go in. Okay. What are you doing here? You know, you really want me to get into this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> because uh, you can help me solve my problem. All right. What? The intention was, was that there's a, a mold for a hemisphere, mm -hmm. you know, like a negative, yeah. you know. This sits in the mold, like the corner's touching, you know, the surface of the mold. Yeah. And, and this top is contiguous with that. But this is, this is enclosed, of course. And, yeah, and then this, this is enclosed, this is open, mm -hmm. and there would be four spots. Four spots or stands? Well, just spots where the, where the corners were touching, touching the mold. Right, okay. You know, like I like splash in the plaster and, mm -hmm. and, like, and still then like... But under, how would under, anybody see those? Well, you have, I mean, from here you can't see them. You'd you kind of extrapolate from the depth and then you'd go... Do you think of this as a floor piece? Yeah, then you'd go from a distance, you would see them if you looked for them. Right, but this is a floor piece? Yeah. Anything going on in here eventually? No. Okay. Side is just the thickness of the metal. Yeah. You know, just touching at those four points. Right. Yeah. In theory. 
Well, in reality. In reality, too? Yeah. Okay. And, and no end side there. Well, can't you uh, hasten the rusting here? I have to do it over again. Really? I, I have to do it. <laughs> so do it. Do it. Get to work. Get to work and do it. Get to work and do it. So the other big piece we're going to be yeah, having. Huh? Aren't you glad you asked? <laughs> yes, I am. I am, as a matter of fact. I like to learn things. <laughs> that all sculpture begins as idea, and it has to be translated not into, into something as artificial as a painting, which gives the illusion of dimensionality and things of that sort, which it doesn't have. But a sculpture's got to be translated from the ideas in the sculpture's head to literal three-dimensional matter. So instead of having them like, uh, like they are on right angles, they... well, it's like flat. It's yeah. like... It can be almost anything. For, for Beethoven, it can be four notes, which will lead to a symphony. With writing a play, I make the assumption that there's some ideas that are motivating the piece. But since I'm a playwright, I examine those ideas in dramatic form. And so it is with a painter, a painter or a sculptor. It is a translation from, from the initial impetus, whatever it is, and it can be so varied, uh, in, into the concrete piece. And I don't want to put anything more than those three pieces in that room. I, I hate to crowd things. Right, right. I and I think, I think you'll be happy. Well, relatively happy. <laughs> as happy as I get. Yeah, as happy as you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be as happy as you get. <laughs> Silly creature. <laughs> He loves coming to the studio and finding things that you've sort of hidden under your bed. So in that sense, he gets very involved with uh, your thinking process. And okay, Be it. careful with these yep. stairs. Yep. When you go through different changes in your work, Sometimes they can be quite drastic, and often you lose the people that supported your work before if you make a change. That happens a lot. And what I really appreciate with Edward is that he's always uh, stuck by even going through some of these changes. I was doing extremely organic work that it really was not necessarily up his alley. This is the space where I do the dirty work. Right, but how do you get everything up from here? Well, there's a, he's been very open-minded. This incredible uh, paint on it that looks, makes it look like bronze. I, think. I first met Edward in 1975 or 6. I was having um, a show and he invited me to his foundation out in Montauk. It's a wonderful place with a studio for two artists who work for a month and we became friends, mainly because I brought my dog, and I think he would rather talk to, to dogs and people, given the choice. Every time you go to look at a painting, you should see the first painting you've ever seen. And you should have that freshness of experience, the same is true uh, with a piece of sculpture. You see the first piece of sculpture you've ever seen. You, you, you read the first poem you've ever read. It should always be a, a totally fresh experience, and must be approached and appreciated on its own terms. This piece is finished now. Mm -hmm. Nice piece. Thank you. I like that a lot. Can't put it in the show because I have other ideas about, about, about the show. All right. I want to use, uh, uh, I've been wandering around and uh, I know I want to use that piece, that bucket piece. Okay. In, in, in the show, and, I, okay. and there's a piece downstairs, uh, that, that box on... Uh, With the, the rubber forms yeah, hanging yeah, from it. Yeah, I okay, certainly yes. want to use that. And uh, there was another piece that I saw that I know I want to use in the show, also. A kind of coherence of uh, five pieces, like a big, nice, long room for you. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, historical things are interesting. I like to know who people studied with. It's interesting to see whether they transcended their, uh, their teachers. Uh, what they learned from the teachers, how they departed uh, from their teachers, whether their teachers limited them or helped them expand their perspectives. Well, that, that, that's, that's interesting. But I don't like to be told how to respond to art or whether or not I should like it uh, just because some art critic does, who is probably just as prejudiced uh, as I am about things. 
and maybe is in form, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything from the ceiling, so I can't use that one. Okay. But I do certainly want that one in the show and the others. Now, I want to go downstairs and talk to you about the, the low one that I want to put in the... Uh, Okay, we can do that. Show. Let's go down to downstairs. And do that. Prejudice isn't necessarily a bad thing. Anybody is, who is prejudiced toward demanding that all art be an exciting experience is, is certainly better prejudiced than somebody who thinks that art that, that is disturbing is, is corrupt. I am highly prejudiced against art that I don't think does anything to change people's uh, idea of, 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 of what reality and consciousness are about. That bothers me. I'm deeply prejudiced against that. Life is too short to waste your time with boring, decorative art.